and here we go. Fabulous. Welcome to our first Farm to School Book Club meeting. We are so happy for anyone who joins us. Um, my name is Anna Jackson. I'm the program coordinator. Let's all go around and introduce ourselves. I'm Allie Villegas. I'm the nutrition educator with Farm to School. My name is Anna Litz. I am the Farm to School garden manager. And we just, um, so we just wanted to talk first about why we're doing a book club. We, uh, during this time, we just really want to stay connected to all of our students and teachers, um, our neighbors and friends. This is really like open to anyone who wants to join. Um, we don't really even, if you want to pop in, um, we're going to try to do this weekly at the same time. So Thursdays at one o'clock. And um, if you didn't read the book, that's okay. If you just want to come and, and say hello to us and ask Farmer Litz a question about your home garden or maybe ask Allie a question about nutrition, um, we would love to just chat. Or if you want to ask us about where to get food and good local food during this time, we can give you suggestions. Um, or if you just want to say hello, that's okay. We're too. here for you guys. We are here for you guys. And so we miss each other and this is just our way to stay connected. Um, and then in the same time, we thought we could talk about some pretty cool books. So um, there are so many amazing books out there about a lot of the concepts that we, we delve into with Farm to School. So we thought this was a good time to share those with you. Um, and this is all just for fun. There's no grade, there's no expectations. Um, it's just people coming together to talk about books. Um, so this week we started with Seed Folks. Um, and I want to start, yay, Ali has the book. Um, so that is Seed Folks. It's a very great book. It's by Paul Fleischman. And um, I want to read a quick um, summary of the book um, from a place called Longwood Gardens. They use this in a lot of their programs. And um, I think they just do a great job of giving a summary of the book. Um, so how can 13 individuals from various ethnic backgrounds, cultures, and age levels living in the inner city of Cleveland, Ohio, come together to form a community. To find the answer to this question, Seed Folks by Paul Fleischman is a must read. These diverse individuals don't speak the same language and they resort to pantomime in order to communicate. Despite their language barriers, they gradually become unified community as a result of the innocent action by a nine-year-old Vietnamese girl named Kim. She plants lima bean seeds in remembrance of her deceased father and his love of gardening in Vietnam. The location of her attempt to grow lima bean seeds is in a trash strewn vacant lot behind her apartment building. And her actions sparked this diverse group of 13 Cleveland apartment dwellers to come together to create a community garden and a special bond never before imagined. These residents become known as seed folks because they were the first to create an inner city community garden. Kim's simple act of planting lima bean seeds sprouted into a beautiful unfolding of the best of humanity's qualities. However, it was no simple feat to clean up the dirt lot um, and restore it to become a beautiful community garden with individual plots. Um, and during the book, you read a lot about 13 individuals' life stories, personalities, and motivations for planting seeds um, through short stories about each person. And so the common theme revolves around how each individual finds a new purpose and meaning in life, as well as experiencing a sense of belonging by creating a community garden. Um, planting the seeds holds a special meaning and purpose for each person, and they not only experience individual transformations, but they gradually open up to others in the community to come to realize that their involvement is for the good of all. And it's a positive personal civic social change that directly results from planting seeds in a garden. So it's pretty natural why we would select this book. Um, yeah, <laughs> we just absolutely, I love this book. I love everything about it. Um, I think it's just a great, um, it's a great testimony to how a garden can inspire a community to grow together. Um, does anybody else wanna share your your thoughts, just your overall kind of thoughts on the book. Yeah, I thought it had a great way of uh, like showing the multiple ways that a garden can bring people together from garden as a therapy to um, the family who is trying to grow lettuce to make money um, over to like the health factor of growing the golden rod and, and using that in their daily practices. Um, and it was easy to connect with each of the characters because it was written in their own voices. So you're able to kind of like uh, connect with them a little bit easier and, and see their perspective a lot clearer. Clear. Yeah, 
said, I think it's just a really good example of how different gardening can be for so many different people and how they don't know until they get in there why, why it's important or how it can be beneficial. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, which character did you relate to most and why do you guys think? Who should go first? Me? I would love to. I really liked Leona. Um, she was the one who grew up with her grandma uh, growing food for medicine with the goldenrod. Um, and she was just awesome. She saw that there was a problem and she went over to the city and she brought a trash bag and it smelt and she like made, made change. And I think that's a lot of what we're trying to do with farm school is uh, make change within our community in a bold way. Um, and by doing different like civil actions to, to bring beauty to our communities. Yeah. What about you, Anna? Um, I really loved Curtis's story. Um, he was trying to win back this girl he loves. And so he planted, um, he was trying to win back Letitia and he planted tomatoes like right where she could see from her apartment. And um, I just think that was just the best story. And I think that, um, you know, he was doing it as just an act of love because he, she loved tomatoes. And so he saw the garden and he thought that um, that was just a way to connect to her again. And um, I just think that's such a beautiful part. It was a beautiful story. This is my favorite also because Yay. he's, I know, because he's showing his love through action instead of just verbalizing it. And he learned that he had made some mistakes prior and wasn't willing to let those mistakes define him and decided let's plant some gorgeous tomatoes that Letitia will want to see. So I, I really like that. And I like how possessive he got over his tomatoes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that story. Um, and then I was thinking we could talk to, have you guys seen any parallels from these stories to experiences in our school gardens? I can start. So I can go. Well, Anna, we can't hear you. Sorry. I heard you before. Anna, you muted yourself. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say, so the parallels, I think, um, um, and really, like, with our school gardens, we planted them in places that were really not being utilized in any other purpose on campus. And so what's been really wonderful to see from like start to finish is the transformation of a space that wasn't being used for anything. And suddenly there's just all of this growth and activity in life and um, seeing students come together um, in, you know, working together in different ways that maybe they didn't have the opportunity to do otherwise in the classroom in just a different setting. So I think that that is something that the book kind of demonstrates really well through its stories throughout the book. And I think that's something that we see every day in the school gardens. Um, and the other thing that I really enjoy with our gardens is that, um, and Anna probably knows this much better, is that you go out there and sometimes there's just like, there's always just some, somebody will give you something and all of a sudden there will be something new in the garden. Like someone will donate a, a tree or um, a tray to start seeds in or someone will just donate seeds to us. And it's like that sense of community where if you build it, they will come. It really does take shape. And so um, the gardens have started from something small and they evolve and they get bigger and they get more complex as time goes on, but the gardens become richer because of the involvement of our diverse community in our schools, which is just so wonderful. And I think that that's something that the book really celebrates too. Totally. I'm not sure why she froze, but <laughs> you keep going. Um, I agree. I thought that students a lot of times don't understand the impact that gardens can have until they actually get into the garden and get hands on, start planting, seeing things grow. And that was the same with um, a lot of the characters in the story as they were wondering what was going on, their ears perked up, maybe they wandered down from their apartment, constantly walked by and finally wanted to show initiative, whatever it may be. And um, I just thought that was that was really nice to see to relate it because they all had a different reason for being there and our students don't know that reason a lot of times before they get there and then it comes to fruition while they're there. 
on it. If you want to talk, I'll try to have it go on my phone. Thank you. Can you hear me through the speaker or just through the phone? I know. Just go for it. We'll see. Um, I agree. Like, obviously, the students coming out to the garden, uh, some of them are very, like, hesitant at first. Uh, but I think you saw that in some of the characters where they were kind of uncertain about what the garden was going to be or what it meant to them. And then um, they gained, like, ownership and interest out of it. And they, like, have no skin in the game after a while. And they want to, like, continue to... Um, like progress and learn more and it's like a hands-on way to like get involved in that activity and, and take ownership. Yeah. So I think overall we were pretty stoked with this book. Um, it's a really quick read if you guys have not read it yet. Very quick read. It just goes through multiple different people who were involved in the garden and their their viewpoint of why they got involved. Um, I think it's a hundred pages the whole book. But it's very inspiring. It's something, it's a book based on community, which is what we need a lot of right now. And we're all like just dying for. So I think the timing with this was very, very good with our current situation. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to uh, add? No, just uh, join us next week. Well, we'll have Florencia Ramirez with us doing a cooking demo after or eat less water. And hopefully we'll, uh, we'll keep going. Yeah. Just train on the roof. Yeah, our, our Zooms will only get better as time goes on, people. So thank you for bearing with us.